Greetings, fine people of the internet. Today we're doing a very special episode. It's going to be unagi, freshwater eel. You ready to get some? This stuff's delicious. We're gonna get started with a Kirin beer, draft beer. That hits the spot. And we've got a couple of appetizers here. We've got some sashimi, two types of fish, and some sea plants here. This is the hijiki style. Where are we gonna go first? Gotta prepare the shoyu. This is a giant bottle of shoyu, look at that. Allow me to show you the show you. There we go. And we've got some wasabi here. Looks like we've got tuna and hamachi, yellowtail. We'll do the tuna first. It's a thick cut. Going in for the tuna. Oh, fatty tuna. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's really good. What a way to start the meal. Let's get some of the daikon radish here. Sea plants. I know, she saw mint leaf. Yum, me. Okay. Now ready for the yellowtail or hamachi. How is that? Beautiful color. Oh, they're both delicious. Very nice. All right, let's do the seaweed. Seaweed or sea plants? Let's call it sea plants. So it's the black one here. It's called hijiki. And then it's served with some beans. It's actually become one of my favorite types. The smell's a bit rough, but it's not fishy. Oh, wholesome. Some bits of meat in here. Chicken as well, too, I think. Tasty. Oh, yeah. Look at it. It's a kuroke from Mishima, which is the area that we're in. It's supposed to be famous. Let's cut into it, shall we? So it's a potato croquette. There it is. Nice and hot. Just the way the camera person likes it. Is the camera person gonna eat first? Yes. Camera person likes it hot. Let's hit it with the sauce. And we're gonna find out if the sauce is boss. Beautiful. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to cool down, another dish has arrived. It's on a skewer here, and this is the unagi or the freshwater eel kidney. Yeah, we've got some innards here. Oh boy, I'm just gonna do a little bit of this. This isn't the main unagi, but they do eat all parts of the eel, so you gotta give it a try. Look at that, it's like, it's gummy. This will pull all of it off. I've had this before. So you can see how it's like connected there, look. You can tell it's innards. Look at that. Ugh. Don't wanna lose my appetite here. I'm gonna go for a small piece, this one. But I wanted to show it to you. It's like liver, mm -hmm. chewy. The sauce is banging, the sauce saves it, actually. Yeah, okay, let's cheese that with some beer. But it's a delicacy in Japan. Eel is a delicacy, you've gotta try it. Um, okay, moving in for the croquette. Ready? It's just a potato. The sauce has been on the salty side. It says sauce, usually it's tangy. The best thing about this is the coating. 
it's really thick and crunchy. This is the best part, the batter. Love that crunch on the outside. Let's add a bit more sauce, shall we? See if we can sweeten it up a little bit. That's better. It comes served with cabbage, which is pretty standard in Japan. Fried foods, a lot of times served with shredded cabbage. And the cabbage goes well with the sauce too. Next up, this is not the eel. This is called Saba fish. It's my favorite horse mackerel. So we got to give it a try. I typically order it if it's on the menu. It's really, really good. You hit it with the lemon. Yes, we shall. And that is a beautiful looking piece of fish there, isn't it? And yeah, this is nice. It's been deboned already. Look at that fish, look at that. It's got the light and the dark meat mixed in together there. Let's go for a big bite. Wow. I could eat this stuff every day. Oh my gosh. It's cooked just right. Yeah, oh, saba. Very meaty fish. And we've also got some edamame. <laughs> which are boiled soybeans right off the plant. Nice, huh? There they are. Nobody eats them like this, but I wanna show you the beans and my chopstick skills. Actually, no chopsticks necessary. You eat them like peanuts. Just pop them into your mouth. Boiled, lightly salted. Fabulous. I love me some edamame. Going into the winter season, served hot. And what do we have here? These are squid legs inside here, fried squid legs. Oh, this is an exotic one. And it's in a sweet and sour vinegar soup base, I guess you call it. Okay. Oh, goodness. How do you guys feel about squid legs? Me? Mm, indifferent. I'll let you know. Oh, kind of like an onion ring, if you will. Mm hmm. Let's get some of that soup. It's not really vinegar. Pretty light soup. And salty. The thing sometimes I don't like about squid legs is they're too tough, but these, nice and tender. Not too chewy. Just about right. And it's kind of like a tempura batter. Let's cover them. Next up here are some fish cakes, deep fried fish cakes. Comes with a bit of toppings, I guess. Looks like some onions and some ginger. Oh, delightful. Nice texture on the fish cake. It's not rubbery, meat like. Mm -hmm. Almost looks like a hamburger patty, doesn't it? That's pretty good. Yeah. Six of carrots in there. Kind of tastes like meatloaf. And then very like stiff taste on the shoga. Shoga. <coughs> oh my gosh. Ginger. Yeah, it's like just grated ginger in its natural, natural way. Yeah, grated. That's some grating it right there. We'll wash that down with some hot tea. Okay, is it time for the eel yet? How much longer do we have to wait? Well, the eel is gonna be the main event, so hopefully you guys are gonna stick around for that. Check out this tempura. It's got the shiroi ebi, the white little tiny shrimps in it. Beautiful looking, isn't it? How do you eat it? <laughs> well, gotta cut it into bite-sized pieces first. What else is that? Oh, there's onions in it too? Okay, that's good. Let's uh, fix up the dressing here, or the dipping sauce. Again, it's got the shoga or 
Shoga. I always forget the English for Shoga. It came out already once in this video. <laughs> Do you guys remember? <laughs> Move to the head of the class, if you remember. Okay, here goes. Mm. Got mostly onions in that first bite. Mm. It goes really well with this. This is hot, the hot dipping sauce. And the shrimp does have a sweetness to it. Let's just try the shrimp by itself. See how small those are? Tiny. Mm -hmm. But I think the main ingredient in this tempura is onion. That is tasty. That is some really nice, light, flaky tempura. It's all about the texture of the batter. You can just eat it like this. That lovely crunch, so good. Tempura is a treat. If you guys haven't tried tempura, definitely give it a shot. All right, here we go. The main event, the unagi, freshwater eel, ready? Gonna open the box. We're gonna admire the box first. Beautiful looking, isn't it? All right, ready? Ta -da. There it is, oh my goodness. It's hard to believe that that's eel right there, the way that it opens up like that and is served flat like a filet. Gorgeous, isn't it? It's a really nice sauce. What else have we got here? Oh, a nice soup, clear soup, not a miso. Nice. Got some pickled ginger here. We've got, looks like some tofu there. And the hijiki seaweed salad again. So the first thing that you do when you're about ready to eat eel is make sure you find the magic bottle. Okay, you're gonna take two fingers and rub on it. Okay, feel it heating up. And then when you release the little pin here, a genie's gonna pop out and grant you three wishes. Ready? In three, two, one. Sancho, this is called, this is special Japanese pepper that numbs your tongue. Use it in small quantities at first. I'm just gonna do the first, the top piece there. We'll leave this one for later. Okay, going in for the unagi. So there's basically two types of eel in Japan. The freshwater eel, which is this one, the unagi, and there's the saltwater, which is the anago. This is the one that you want. This is the delicacy. So it's cooked over a barbecue, like that on skewers. It smells just fabulous. I'm gonna pick this up for effect here. All right, going in. Mm. Oh, it is so tender. It does not taste like you would think an eel would taste if you've never had eel before. This is like some kind of rare meat. It's just delicious. It does not taste like seafood at all. Mm. Mm. Oh. oh, just oily deliciousness. It's... Wow, what kind of meat? Some kind of like rare beef or rare pork. It's an eel, yo. Flavored so well with that sauce. It's in a tangy sauce. Just the texture of the eel. It's so soft. You've got that barbecue flavor and the sancho, sancho pepper. You can, it tingles a little bit. And the rice has got the flavoring of it in it as well too. Oh, like the best rice ever. Oh my gosh. Once you start eating it, you cannot stop. Oh my gosh, get in there you guys, grab a bite of that. That is fabulous, get in there. Get some. Oh. Mm. I feel like this is one of those I'm not worthy moments. Oh my gosh. And again, the best tasting rice ever. There it is, half of it, cleared. What a fabulous experience.
And the question is, does the camera person eat? The camera person always eats. That's right. But you guys, you can eat too. Virtual eating session. Go for it. Oh, what? You don't have chopsticks? There you go. I feed it to you. So next up is the soup. And this has got unagi in it too. Look at this. This is one of the organs of the unagi. Don't look at don't you don't need a close-up of this. We're gonna give it to you anyway. Yeah. When in Japan, you gotta do is the Japanese. Ooh. Better than I had expected. This is some cilantro on top of here. I love this soup. Mmm. Oh, it's nice. It's nice to have something other than miso soup for a change. Yeah, if you can get this clear soup, it's worth a try. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we try the tofu? I'm gonna hit that with a little bit of, show you. It's got the ginger on top too. Going in. Oh yeah, I'll tell you that ginger, I'm gonna put hair in your chest. And this is the same salad we had in the beginning. Delightful. So correction, this is not cilantro, it's mitsuba. It's a Chinese style cilantro. A little bit different, but very similar taste. Mm -hmm. And we've got some pink pickled ginger here. And pickled ginger tastes just like pickles. The, the taste of the ginger, the roughness of the ginger is gone. Well, this is the kind I recommend. Tasty. Okay, correction number two. This is not pickled ginger. This is pickled daikon radish, which I never would have guessed, but they taste identical. And that is gonna do it for this meal, you guys. What did you think? The unagi freshwater eel, it's a treat. If you get a chance to try it, definitely, it's worth it. And it's available everywhere, but I would, I would eat it at a nice restaurant instead of buying it at the supermarket because it's totally different. It's a different experience. It's like having a really nice steak. So that's gonna do it for this one, except for my rating. I'm gonna give it five out of six total. I've had unagi before, but this is pretty exceptional. So thank you all so much for watching and we shall see you in the next one. Eric out.